Hey there, fabulous fashionistas. Welcome back to my sewing channel, Mari Sews. Well, today, get ready to roar with excitement because we're diving into the wild world of sewing. I've got a fabulous treat for you all. It's the incredible sundown skirt by Green Style Creations. And I sewed it right on up in this fierce pink cheetah print knit. And guess what? Today's video is sponsored by the amazing people over at VeloStar who make Sewing a Breeze with their absolutely fantastic sewing kits. So we'll be talking a bit more about that later, but right now let's go unleash our creativity. I need to tell you all about this really amazing fabric that I got. I mean, this stuff is just stunning. I scored this fierce pink cheetah print knit from Fashion Fabrics Club, I believe. It's like the jungle came and was delivered to my house. <laughs> it's just so wild. I absolutely love this stuff. Now, this stuff recovers like a dream. I've already worn it several times. Let me know down in the comments if you like unleashing your wild side with animal prints like I do. <laughs> now, let's talk about the pattern. So this pattern is a sundown skirt by Green Style Creations. And you all, it's just a really versatile, and flattering pattern. It's a flattering skirt that gives you a beautiful silhouette and it just looks so sleek. I mean, even cheetahs get jealous at how sleek this looks. <laughs> this pattern is like magic. It just flatters all body shapes and sizes as you can see in these pictures here. Now, Green Style really does do a great job with nesting their pattern sizes so that you can easily blend from one size to the next. And I have to admit, I really like their size range in their charts. Their hip size for this skirt goes all the way up to 62 inches. Before we jump into the tutorial, let's just take a moment to thank our amazing sponsor, VeloStar. Their sewing kits, it's you are their lifesaver and I really mean it. I use these all the time from threads to needles. It has everything a sewing enthusiast needs. And the best part, <laughs> well, it comes in a really cute compact carrying case and you can add whatever extra little things you absolutely have to go. It is perfect for sewing on the go. I like to add large shears sewing machine thread and needles, and a seam gauge to my kit to make it just extra handy. This kit comes in three different sizes, and I have to admit, I like to keep this really small one in my work bag, because um, it helps me when I lose buttons, which ha for some reason happens often. But today, I'll be using this large kit to make my skirt. If you'd like to get a sewing kit for your own, check out the information box and there's a link over to the Amazon site where you can order this. Thank you, VeloStar, for making my journey here perfect. <laughs> Get it, cheetah? <laughs> All right, it's time to unleash the serger and our sewing machine. So first let's grab our fabulous cheetah print fabric that's already been cut out. All of these pattern pieces are already cut out and um, the other items that I need to sew this up. Now I'm going to construct this. So let me grab the items that I actually need to make that happen. And because this is going to be done on my serger, I'm just going to use these small scissors from my VeloStar kit. I'll need that. This item, which helps me finish my serger threads, tomato, and pins. I'm going to line up my back side with the front or vice versa here and pin it along the side or you can use the sewing clips. And now the other side. Now I'm going to serge both seams.
Okay, so this is where we are right now. This is the front. My side seams are sewn together. So now we need to attach the waistband. And here are my two waistband pieces. This one's the front and this one's the back. So um, they're hard to tell apart. So I'm going to mark this one with this Taylor's pencil here. And I'm just gonna put an F on the inside so I know what this is. And that's pretty hard to see, so I'm going to get my regular chalk. Okay, so I put an F on the piece that is the front. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've pressed my waistband in half here. And this is the front, I believe. Let me, yep, there's my marking. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this so that it is upside down and I'm going to slip it right over the top of my skirt. And I'm just gonna use the sewing clips that came in my kit. So first I'm gonna do both sides. Trying to match up those side seams as best I can. Then stretch it just a bit so you can get an idea for where the middles are. And this stuff likes to roll, so I need to keep grabbing it from down in there because you see how it's rolling? I need to make sure that they're all lined up when I actually do so. Okay, flip it around. And then on this side, I'm gonna use two pins. And I'm gonna leave a gap of about roughly three inches so I can get my elastic in. Okay, so I'm going to start surging from this pin and I'll go all the way around and I'll come back and I'll stop here. And then we'll deal with inserting our elastic. Let's go attach this waistband to the actual skirt. Okay, so I am at the end where I need to finish off. So let me just show you how I finish this off for the newie, the newbies out there. So I'm going to take this pin out. I'm just going to slide it over like this. And that's what it looks like. So now our waistband is attached. So I'm going to go ahead and press my seam allowance down so that it's facing the wrong side of the fabric there. And then we can add our elastic. So now we need to put our elastic in our waistband. So I'm going to attach a really big safety pin to one end of my elastic. And then I'm going to locate the area where I left the actual opening here. And make sure that you're putting it in the opening where the waistband is. So I'm just going to put in my elastic all the way around. Okay, so now that my elastic's all the way through, I'm going to overlap the ends here, and I'm going to zigzag stitch back and forth right here to secure them. And now I've sewn my zigzag stitches on there. I'm gonna just suck it back in there adjust my fabric. So I'm going to fold this back down and I'm going to line up all these edges again. And I'm going to place my label all the way at the top here. So that's what it looks like. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and search this closed. Okay. So now that I have that in, I'm going to need to give this a little press to make sure that it's laying properly. And just because I want some fun top stitching on the waistband, I'm going to add two rows of straight stitches with lengthened stitches and I'm going to stretch it as I'm sewing so that way I just have some nice decorative stitches that well actually serve a purpose they help keep my elastic from twisting around so I'm going to do that right now chat for a bit because I just realized that there's something that I do that might actually be helpful for some of you all. Now, this, and this is in regards to interfacing. So when I interface my pieces, when I have long curly pieces like this, I don't lay this out on the interfacing, which is actually pretty narrow. Um, because it just kind of like takes up so much of it. You end up with wonky pieces. It's always a little weird. The goal of interfacing is to stabilize your pieces so that they're not unraveling. You can see that my pieces here are no longer rolling in on itself, which is really nice, um, but there's an easier way to do it. The way that I do it is that I actually just cut strips of interfacing that are as wide as the item that I need. So in this case, this is a two inch wide piece, this facing. So I cut three strips of my stretchy interfacing and then I start to just kind of layer them on top of each other and piece it all together as I go. And actually, let me show you one that I haven't trimmed. This is what it looks like. And you can see, I don't even cut <laughs> it very closely to two inches. I, this is all over the place, but that is typically what I end up with in terms of interfacing. It saves me a ton of time. I don't have to worry about how things are matching up. How, if I cut my interfacing the same as the rest of my pieces, I mean, it's just, it's a really nice and easy way to go about it. And then I just trim off all the extras. You all, this is by far the easiest way that I have found to <laughs> interface your pieces without wasting a bunch of it. Now I have my interfacing strips that I need to take care of. So I am going to take these pieces and I'm going to attach them at the ends up here on both sides and I'm going to sew those together and then just attach it to the bottom of my dress. Now I have my facing surged on to both sides here. What I'm going to do is take this over to my ironing board and I'm going to give it a really careful press. I'm not too worried about clipping my seam allowance here because it's such a small seam allowance so I think I can manipulate it to the shape that I want but it's definitely needed it's definitely going to need a really good press okay so we are right there at the finish line you can see here that I've actually finished the top edge of my facing. I think I really like the way the yellow thread looks on this. Now I'm just going to head over to the sewing machine and straight stitch this entire facing on. Um, and I'm going to use my walking foot because I want to avoid waviness if I can in my fabric. So here we are at the sewing machine and I have a walking foot on my machine and I have to admit I'm always using a walking foot whenever I am making anything in knit. This is my good luck charm 
when it comes to getting a really nice finish on my knits without any puckering. And when it's all pressed out, you can see what it looks like. It's so nice and flat. I'm telling you all, if you are sewing knits and you don't have a walking foot, you are definitely missing out. I mean, it's like, it is the best weapon that you have against rippling, moving, slinky fabrics. So this is the final skirt. And let me show you all what it looks like on. You all, this sundown skirt is so comfy and stylish. It's like wearing a cloud made out of cheetah hugs. But I hope a cheetah never really tries to hug me. Overall, for this pattern, I felt like the instructions were very clear. And I really do feel like this is a beginner serger project for anyone who would like to give it a go. If I can sew this, <laughs> you all definitely can as well. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that way you don't miss any future sewing tutorials and tips. And remember, whether it's a cheetah skirt or a daring dress, sewing allows us to unleash our creativity and be our fiercest selves. So until next time, keep sewing, stay fierce, and love yourself unapologetically. And check out this video right over here. Bye.